Today, I'm going to be sharing a breakthrough I had a while back, and I've kind of just been collating the information to put it together, but it is a mathematical basis for the fine structure constant, which is not believed to exist. However, my mathematical basis is 99.994% accurate. So let's just review quickly what the fine structure constant is. It is described in many, many ways, and it shows up in many places, but a couple of the definitions that I wanted to highlight is that it quantifies the strength of electromagnetic interaction between elementary charged particles. It is a dimensionless quantity, independent of systems of units used, which is related to the strength of the coupling of an elementary charge, E, with the electromagnetic field. It's also sometimes referred to as the ratio of two energies, the energy needed to overcome the electrostatic repulsion between two electrons at a distance of d apart, and the energy of a single photon of wavelength, or angular wavelength, and you can see the Planck relation. The Planck relation is the ratio of the electrostatic repulsive force to their gravitational attractive force. So the fine structure constant shows up in many, many places in physics, and this is generally the formula and the numerical representation of it. Alpha is generally the term used, and it's often represented by being 1 over 137. And the number on the left here is the decimal representation of that. And as I said, it's a dimensionless constant, which does not seem to be directed to any related mathematical constant, as far as anybody knows currently. Um, and this number uh, sort of drives physicists crazy. And Richard Feynman said, you would like to know where this number for our coupling comes from. Is it related to pi or perhaps to the base of the natural logarithms? And I'm going to show you that yes, it is, in fact. And nobody knows, he said. Well, we do now. It is one of the greatest damn mysteries of physics. So... The other quote that I wanted to bring up with this because I think it's important is that I.J. Good said, a numerical explanation would only be acceptable if it could be based on a good theory that is not yet known but exists in the sense of a platonic ideal. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you here is because all combinatorial information about platonic solids, such as the number of vertices, edges, and faces, can be determined from P and Q. And these are called the schlaffy lee symbol. I'm not sure how to say that. And that gives a combinatorial description of the polyhedron. The other relationship between these values is given by Euler's polyhedral formula. And as you can see on the right, Hamiltonian cycles of the vertices of the five platonic solids, only the octahedron has a, a Euler in path or cycle. And... So I just want to point out real quick that the dihedral angle of the icosahedron is 138.19, as well as uh, the natural log of 1 million is 13.81. And uh, if you add in a, a little bit of uh, Feigenbaum's constant there, you can get even closer. So let's quickly run down a few things that are important. The... Number of vertices in an icosahedron is 12, the number of edges in a cube, octahedron and hexahedron is 12, and the number of faces in a dodecahedron is 12. All regular polyhedral correspond to the Euler characteristic of the sphere, which means that the PQ number, X, equals 2, and this applies identically to all spherical polyhedra. Thus, we can relate these 3D polyhedra to 4D quaternions with a simple integration. And so... This is a number I discovered before I figured out this formula, and I call it the Bobier impact number because my work is actually related to recursionary asteroid impacts on Earth and events and climate cycles regarding planetary cycles. I'm not a mathematician per se, I'm just kind of good at figuring out answers and solving riddles. So this is the number that I came up with, 1.00696861. And that's either e to the power of 1 over 144th, or it's the 144th root of e. And this is important, and I figured this out because I was working with infinite sets and Ramanujan's sum for an infinite series, which is negative 1 12th. And negative 1 12th squared equals 1 over 144, which 
uh, since you're squaring it, can be plus or minus. And so this number is important, and the way that it works out is that if we divide 138 by this number, we get a number that is 99.993435% accurate. So it's not exact, but maybe some of you mathematicians will be able to integrate this in a slightly better way than I can, but frankly, that's it's pretty good. There are a lot of different uh, ways to calculate the fine structure constant, and depending on the energy input, uh, the number can be slightly different. So this is this is pretty close, and I, I'm I'm pretty stoked on this, and you'll see why in a second here. The Bobier impact number lies between the 99th root of two or the hundredth root of two, uh, and it exactly equals the 99.81314th root of two, and so. Uh, when we compare the accepted value of the fine structure constant, which is very well defined and very precise, this is what we come up with. The Bobier impact number is good for the first five digits after the decimal place, and if we round, it's good to the sixth, and if we divide one by the other, that's where I come up with the percentage accurate. So, I don't know. I mean, I'm not a mathematician, guys. If you guys don't think that that's impressive or important, that's fine. But I'll show you why I think that the 144 integrated into the fine structure constant is important because it shows up in so many places, in so many realms. And I'm going to get to that in a second. But what's important to realize is that half of 138 over 144 is 69 over 72. And the constant growth doubling time equation uses 69.3, and that's the natural rate of decay and the natural log, and periodic growth doubling time uses 72. So I think that there is some slight discrepancy in the way that we're thinking about time and growth in the universe, uh, especially as it applies to the Hubble constant, and I think why, that's why we get the, the, the range that we do in this range right there, which is like 67 to 74. and Really, the, the number that it's probably going to converge on is 69.3 or 69.4 in my opinion, but I'm uh, that's a little bit above my pay grade. So let's just look at 144 really quick and why it's important, why it makes sense to define the fine structure constant. There's all these reasons and all these places where 144 shows up, and it's it's almost too applicable for this not to be the mathematical formula for it and uh, I don't I can't even begin to tell you how much more information there is out there and ways that this can be applied but one one in particular here you'll see up on the top right there uh, I found how this relates to the monster group and this is another discovery that curtails with with this one is that 144 equals 4 pi times the fifth root of the monster group and that's an approximation. Someone smarter than me, Mr. Lisi or uh, Mr. Weinstein or maybe Penrose, if I can get him to pay attention, can probably figure this out uh, better than I can. And there's just so many ways that 144 shows up in, in the fractal dimension, in the Fibonacci. Element 144 would be full at 5G electron shells, the, the factorials, the intervals. It's very high Euler uh, phi totient, and I mean, look at this. It, it's it's everywhere, you know. It's quaternion, it's Gaussian, it's Hamiltonian, and I don't know. You guys tell me. Tell me. I don't know. If you Google 0 0.696861, you get a lot of physics and other science results. So I think that this number is applicable, and I think that it should be used and paid attention to because I didn't really find it articulated anywhere else. Uh, the Bobier impact number 1.00696861. So uh, hopefully it helps somebody figure something out. But this is uh, my basic sketch of, of those numbers. As you can see, it doesn't ex exactly equal 144 to multiply 4 pi times the fifth root of the monster, but it's quite close. And uh, there's probably some calculus integrations that would make that exact. I don't know. It's really hard to get an integer from two irrational numbers. Now, uh, as I said, I'm not a mathematician per se. I just like a good riddle. And I was studying climate cycles and 
procession of the equinoxes and, and how they relate to astrology and the changing of the ages, which I know sounds kind of hokey to a lot of people, but I'm really just approaching it from a scientific perspective and trying to understand how the physics is manifested in the wisdom of astrology, not necessarily daily horoscopes or anything like that. Uh, this is mundane astrology. This is actual uh, planetary cycles and orbital dynamics is really what I'm studying here. And so you can see 144 shows up here again in a lot of ways. 25, 77, 6 as one of the, the numbers that I use for the processional cycle. It's generally given as 25, 7, 7, 1. 5, but 776 has a lot of um, power to it and factorial capability. And if you add 144 to 25776, you do get the 25. 920 number, which is what most people consider the great processional year to be. Now, the fact is it's actually only 23,200 years, but that's only when we factor in apsidal precession of Earth's orbit. And most people don't know that. That's a very kind of recent discovery and so much wisdom has been built on these other numbers that it hasn't been incorporated into astrology, astronomy, a lot of other things, a lot of sciences. They still don't really realize that the processional cycle is only 23,000 years. But the 25,600, 25,700, or 26,000, whatever you want to round it to, is also important. It's clearly important in these cycles. And it's important in terms of, uh, I think, the magnetic moment in the magnetic field of Earth and how the magnetic field axis interrelates to the orbital spin axis. So... Uh, I'm not going to get into that too much, but you can just chew on these numbers here. Now, this is also an important point, and another discovery that I made was that if you combine the 400-year Jupiter-Saturn conjunction cycle, where they get very close every 400 years or get closer, with the 580 lunar-solar eclipse cycle, the lowest common multiple where you can divide both of those and where those two harmonics would meet would be 11,600 years. That 11,600 years is a well-known number and it pops up because that's the number that uh, is given for how many years ago that Atlantis sank. And uh, I can show how that actually relates to the climate cycles and the precession and the tilt and a lot of other things. I'm not going to get into that here, but I just want to point out that if you multiply that number by two, you get 23, this should be 200 here, and that number is what they say the great processional year is now. If you, if you really factor in apsidal procession, it's 23,000 years. And I'm just saying it's probably 23,200. That's my guess because of this cycle. And so I don't want to linger on that too much. I know that's not what a lot of you probably care about. <clears throat> but just to prove my point, um, here is the last few years of those cycles. And you can see that we are really at a, a point of convergence for those cycles, which would be unusual except for at 11,600 years. Moving on, if we look at the fifth root of 144, we get 2.7019, etc. Um, and not to get creepy and weird, but 2701 is encoded in Genesis 1.1. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of Dramatria because my name in Dramatria means something ridiculous and I just can't swallow that. And, uh, but the, the folks who, who do this work, they're, they're not completely coming out of left field because Genesis was written by Barosis, who was a Babylonian astronomer, and he encoded a lot of planetary information and math into G Genesis as well as, I'm sure, um, Francis Bacon and all the Rosicrucians who translated into English did as well. But it's not just encoded into Genesis. There's a, there's a gentleman who, who did a lot of work with this number, and it's all directly related for him to the Bible. Vernon Jenkins is his name. I recommend you peruse this book because a lot of it is actually just related to geometry and higher dimensionality with these numbers may have been understood or may not. And it may have been understood at maybe a two or three dimensional level, but I'm trying to take it here to the fourth and fifth. Uh, the way that I define the fourth dimension is spin and the fifth dimension is rotation. That's just my personal opinion. I, li I like that 
because I'm using a quaternion matrix to create a gravity paradigm using the Lorenz equations. You can see my other videos for that. And that's kind of where this all grew out of and why I was working on this. So I'm still trying to figure out how to prove that and I'm getting closer with this matrix of numbers, but I just wanted to share this fine structure constant mathematical basis because I think it's pretty profound. Now, Vernon Jenkins has a whole slew of other stuff. I just want to show a few of his graphics because he relates it to the inner and outer layer of different polygons. And actually, he, it's, it's cool because he, he's relating it to sphere stacking, which is what the monster group is all about. And, um, and the von Neumann number and stuff like that. And the universal operator, they're, they're so close to the 200,000 versus 196,883 are very, very close. And I think that there's an integration there. I, I haven't quite dug deep enough to find all that, but like I said, I'm not a math guy. I'm just uh, trying to figure some stuff out. And what's interesting is that, you know, Vernon brings up is that 73 times 37 is 2701. And so that, that again relates directly back to the 137 of the former definition of the fine structure constant. And, and here are a few of the things that, that he shows and, and he relates it to the digits of pi and offsetting them. And it's, it's a little bit much for me to try to take in. I kind of just browsed his paper because I was looking for this number. But if anybody's into the Bible and Germatria, I would definitely recommend checking it out. And if you're only into uh, geometry and higher math, you can still probably pick something up there that, that might be interesting. But that's to each his own. So in conclusion, the fine structure constant in QED is the theory underlying the electromagnetic coupling. The renormalization group dictates how the strength of the electromagnetic interaction grows logarithmically as the relevant energy scale increases. So the 1 over 137 is actually the asymptotic value of the fine structure constant at zero energy. At higher energies, such as the scale of the Z boson, one instead measures an effective alpha of 1 over 127. So I think my small percentage that I'm off is is relevant, I'm not gonna dismiss it, but I think that there is a certain amount of play in this number that maybe somebody smarter than me with a physics degree or a higher mathematical degree can uh, fine tune a little bit better. But in the meantime, that's what I have for you. This is the Bobier impact number and the mathematical basis for the fine structure constant. That's it, I hope you enjoyed, have a great day.